Hello everyone, in continuation of the previous discussion in the previous class about price earning ratio. I hope you remember in the previous class we did talk about price earning ratio and PE multiplier based valuation. We have seen what is the price earning ratio, how it is used as a multiplier. Now uh, we have a certain set of questions which could be very very important in examination though these questions could be simple but still important. So let us uh, not waste any time and just directly switch to an important question over here. Please uh, carefully read this question. Now look at what is informed over here. Following information is available of NJ Limited. They have given all figures in rupees lakhs. PBIT that is profit before interest and tax given as 42 lakhs. Interest on debt at 12% is given as 6 lakhs. Now here some things will be implied if the amount of interest is 6 lakhs which is at 12% on the value of the debt the value of the debt will be obviously 6 lakhs divided by 12% what would that give you 50 lakhs correct thereafter we have profit before tax so it is PBIT minus interest that will give you profit before tax less tax at 30% you get profit after tax then you have number of shares outstanding as 6 lakh shares and each share is of rupees 10 each and that results into EPS of 4.2 the market price per share is given as 42 and therefore the PE ratio is 10 times all this information is readily given to you let us read the question ahead it says NJ limited has an undistributed reserves of rupees 90 lakhs the company required rupees 84 lakhs for the purpose of expansion which is expected to earn the same rate of return on capital employed as present. However, if the debt to capital employed ratio is higher than 40% then PE ratio is expected to decline to 9 times and the rise in the cost of additional debt to 15%. Given this data and objective of the company to maximize the value of its shares which of the following options the company would prefer they have given two options in the question option one if the required amount is raised through debt option two if the required amount is raised through equity and the new equity shares be issued at the prevailing market price of rupees 42 each now before we start attempting the solution to this question we should be first of all clear with how to approach this particular question. So you have to understand what is the rate of return on capital employed at present. Why you need to find it out? Because when the company is expanding with more funding, it will generate same rate of return on capital employed as at present. That is what informed in the question. So it is important for you to identify what rate of return on capital employed company is generating at present. So first of all you should observe that currently the earnings before interest and tax is informed to you. What you just need to know is the total amount of capital employed at present. As I told you connecting the information of interest rate and the amount of interest you can find the total value of the debt. Number of equity shares are given as uh, 6 lakh shares and the uh, face value of each share is given to you as rupees 10 that itself shows that 60 lakhs is the amount of equity capital and the first line over here indicates that 90 lakhs is the amount of undistributed reserves lying with the company. So you have equity share capital you have reserves that is retained earnings and then you have debt aggregate of these three will give you total capital employed thereafter compare that with the amount of EBIT find the ratio which will be rate of return on capital employed at present one thing done then what happens you look into what is the proportion of debt to total capital employed at present and there are two different funding options one is debt and another is equity if you are issuing debt obviously the additional debt when raised it will cause a rise in the debt to total capital employed ratio however if you have raised the additional amount through equity there will be a decline so what will happen if this 
debt to total capital employed ratio rises beyond 40 percent it will pull down the price earning ratio from 10 times to 9 times correct and the additional debt will be arranged at 15 percent interest existing debt will remain undisturbed that is at 12 percent interest rate the new debt additional debt will be raised at 15 percent if you are issuing the you know additional amount through equity shares you will be issuing at the current market price of rupees 42 you have to figure out which option will be better at the end keep in mind one thing objective of the company is most important see objective of company could be to maximize eps but here in this particular question objective of the company is to maximize its share price and share price will be obtained by multiplying the PE ratio to the EPS. So after the additional funding when you have expanded your capital base you will expect to earn more in the same proportion as you are earning now maintaining constant rate of return on capital employed you will be generating a higher level of income and hence a higher amount of EPS and if you have applied PE ratio to the respective EPS values that is for both the options debt financing and equity financing eventually look into what is the market price per share what you are getting whichever is higher will be the better option. So let us look into how to present the solution over here. In your solution you will obviously first compute the rate of return on capital employed at present that is ROCE. When you compute this you have to first find the total capital employed as I mentioned equity share capital it will be rupees 60 lakhs plus reserves rupees 90 lakhs and plus 12 percent debt rupees 50 lakhs. How did we figure out this 50 lakhs I have explained to you earlier it is 12 percent debt and amount of interest was 6 lakhs. 6 lakhs divided by 12 percent will give you 50 lakhs as the value of debt. Total capital employed is coming to rupees 2 crores. So return on capital employed will be EBIT divided by total capital employed and that results to 21 percent. So please write up this working and then I take you ahead. All right friends I'm sure you have completed writing this whole thing. So now what is needed we have to compare the amount of debt with the total capital employed to find the debt to total capital ratio or debt to capital employed ratio. What we can see from these figures amount of debt at present is 50 lakhs and total capital employed at present is 2 crores. So at present it is 50 lakhs divided by 2 crores that is what 25 percent. If you are increasing the amount of funding by another 84 lakhs through debt do you know what will be your total debt existing plus additional that existing plus additional 50 lakhs existing 84 lakhs new it will be 134 lakhs and in the denominator your total capital employed will become 200 lakhs which is at present and another 84 lakhs that will be 284 lakhs or 2 crore 84 lakhs you will find that ratio of debt to total capital employed will rise significantly and it is likelihood that it may cross that 40 percent mark whether it is crossing or not we will check and what if you are going with option 2 of raising that another additional 84 lakhs through equity certainly the existing ratio which is 25 percent debt will actually fall down because 50 lakhs of debt will remain as it is but total capital employed will increase to 284 lakhs that will pull down the debt ratio or debt to total capital employed ratio below 25 percent. So let us first uh, write up those ratio calculations before we move ahead. Now over there you write debt ratio equals to debt by total capital employed at present as we have seen without even using your calculator you can work it out that will be 25 percent revised under option 1 where you are raising that additional amount through debt you know 84 lakhs of debt will be added to your existing debt which will also be added to your total capital employed so it is 134 by 284 
it is 47.18 percent it is definitely going beyond 40 percent and in case of option two where you are raising that additional funds through equity that ratio will certainly fall down that is debt to total capital employed will fall down to 17.61 percent so before i take you any further please write up these workings quickly all right friends once you have completed writing these calculations let us move ahead and write up the revised capital structure after additional funds of 84 lakhs raised through option 1 and option 2. The amount of 12% debt which is existing will remain the same in both cases. Additional funds will now be raised at 15% because the condition is fulfilled that in case the debt ratio rises beyond 40%, the debt will be arranged, that is the additional debt will be arranged at 15% interest your existing equity fund will remain as it is that is capital plus reserves it is 150 lakhs and in case of option 2 additional equity will be 84 lakhs so your revised capital employed under either case will be 2 crore 84 lakhs and your revised debt ratio we have worked out already in the previous working it will be 47.18 percent in option 1 and 17.61 percent in option 2 now one thing that is worth mentioning over here under option 1 the debt ratio is greater than 40 percent the expected PE ratio will decline to 9 times. So please write up this entire thing and then I take you ahead. Alright friends uh, once you have completed writing this entire working let us move ahead and write up another working note that will be number of additional shares to be issued in case of option 2. Option 2 where you are going ahead with equity financing. Funds to be raised is rupees 84 lakhs, price per share is rupees 42, correct? So additional shares to be issued will be 84 lakhs divided by rupees 42 and that will give you 2 lakh shares. So please write up this calculation as well and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once we have made this working, we are ready to determine the amount of earnings per share under both the options along with the calculation of expected market price per share so let us work it out option one option two ebit now most important thing we have computed the return on capital employed as 21 percent earlier that is at present same 21 percent will apply on the additional capital employed as well in other words the overall business will be having total capital employed of 2 crore 84 lakhs generating 21 percent return on capital employed so after the expansion the revised ebit under either case will be 59 lakh 64 thousand less interest at 12 percent on the existing debt and less interest at 15 percent on the revised debt or additional debt so this remains 6 lakhs which is already at present this is 15 percent of 84 lakhs so your revised ebt comes to 41 lakh 4000 in option 1 and in option 2 you have 53 lakh 64000 now we have to consider taxation at 30 percent one thing is for sure you save substantial amount of tax under option 1 correct so that enhances your profitability you know why you are saving tax because of interest expenses rising in case of option 1 so you get that tax advantage over there so profit after tax you have computed divide the profit after tax which will be the earnings available to equity shareholders by the number of equity shares and you know it is 6 lakhs in case of option 1 remains unchanged whereas it is 8 lakhs in case of option 2 you know 6 lakhs existing shares and 2 lakhs new shares issued aggregate is 8 lakh shares when you divide the profit after tax by the respective number of equity shares in either options you will be getting the EPS for both options and you check you get a higher EPS in case of option 1 a little lower EPS in case of option 2 option 1 is definitely more profitable but because of the risk involved in option 1 where you have increased the amount of debt substantially your PE ratio declines to 9 times and as a result when you multiply the EPS to PE ratio the expected market price per share goes to 43.09 in case of option 1 
and 46.94 in case of option 2. Because the objective of the company is to maximize the market price per share, it will definitely go ahead with option 2. That conclusion line I will show you in a while, but first you take note of this entire calculation. Alright friends, once your calculations are done, let us move ahead and write up that conclusion. As market price per share is higher under option 2, NJ Limited should plan the expansion through raising additional equity shares. That is option 2 will be preferred. So please write up this concluding part as well and that will be end of the solution.